Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Prime Answers, and I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jantz from Nintendo Prime answering your questions. This is a Q&A series I do every single week, try to release on the weekends. Uh, you guys can get questions in for the next video down in the comments below. It could be about Nintendo, it could be about the channel, it could be about me. Uh, it could be about people related to me if you want it to be, although I'm probably not going to be able to get them to answer any questions. But uh, it is what it is. Let's get into uh, the beginning of the episode, which we always start with giving like a channel update, kind of a state of Nintendo Prime thing every week, let you guys know what's happening at the channel. Uh, first off, we were coming up back-to-back -back weeks of having the highest traffic at Nintendo Prime ever in a single week. That has finally calmed down. We're at 130,000 views for the past week, but really the past four days has been about 40,000 views, uh, averaging about 10,000 views per day. Uh, this is actually higher than before the viral video we had. We had a video go viral. That's what led to all that traffic. Uh, the viral video is done getting views. I, I think it's getting like one or two new views a day now. And I think the reason it slowed down so rapidly is the video actually got copyright claimed. Uh... Yeah, we got not just claimed, we got a full copyright strike for that video. But I talked it over with the person who gave the strike, and uh, apparently he would have rescinded the strike. Uh, he, he he put out the strike. It, it, there's a piece, there's some footage in there I use of this of this uh, switch hacker uh, who was, who was hacking his switch that uh, he didn't like that I put it in my video one because I didn't specifically come to him and ask permission to use it, which you don't legally need to do. Uh, for the way I was using the footage, uh, especially since he was properly sourced and credited. However, it is common sense morally to do that. But uh, that was just another video I was rushing out the door, so I didn't, you know, I didn't bother to even reach out on Twitter, which I think he would have got back right away. He would have probably told me no, uh, or maybe he would have told me yes and then hated my video anyways. He basically copyright claimed because he didn't like his footage being used in a video that painted the hacking scene in a negative light. Uh, that was really why he copyright striked. And then we already hashed it out on Twitter, but he submitted the strike before we hashed it out, and then he forgot to rescind it. So then YouTube took three weeks, but then the strike went through, uh, and then he rescinded it. But it didn't matter because once the strike hit the video, that killed the video. It went away. Yeah, it's back now. You can watch it, but it's not being shared anymore. The video, for all intents and purposes, is dead, and is just going to sit there as our top viewed video ever as Nintendo Prime. But uh, either way, the views you know, are about 5,000 higher per day the last four days than they were before the viral video, so we definitely gained some new subs. We definitely gained some new attention, some new viewership, and I'm hoping to maintain around 10,000 or above views per day as much as I can. Uh, this weekend's going to be a bit rough. I'm actually recording this episode a full day early, editing it a full day early, because uh, I'm not going to be here this weekend. I'm gone. I am doing family stuff, vacation. Not really a vacation. I'm, I'm just going uh, up to the family for uh, like that side of the family's Christmas. And uh, yeah, I got all three kids. I got my fiance coming with because she has the weekend off. And it's hopefully going to be fun, probably going to be stressful. These family gatherings with the three kids uh, never seem to be as enjoyable as I hope they will be. Uh, but who knows? Uh, I think uh, Saturday night will be enjoyable because uh, my, well, basically the, you know, the night that, that you guys are watching this, uh, my sister is actually going to take all three kids um, at my aunt's house. Uh, she's going to watch them there and, and keep them overnight there. Well, me and my fiance are in town as well, but we're going to be staying at a hotel. Uh, kind of to give me and my fiance like a, a break before we get into the big Christmas activities on Sunday. Um, it's also my daughter's birthday party, the day that you're watching this. Um, so happy birthday to her. She actually turns eight on Monday, but uh, we're having our party today. So it's a busy day because like, we have the party. Then from that, we have to drive like three hours to, to a Christmas thing. So... Uh, whatever, at least uh, it won't be stressful at night because it'll just be me and my fiance at a hotel hanging out. Uh, maybe we'll go out on a date. Maybe we'll go see a movie. I don't know. It's a town we, we like never go to, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what activities and stuff we can do uh, that'll be fun for us to do as a couple and that we just don't get to do very often. Uh, beyond that, um, <laughs> I did want to talk a little bit about uh, the top 10 video I promised this week. I said this week I was going to launch... Um, a top 10 video more so as an experiment uh to prepare for 2019 didn't happen and it didn't happen because of these weekend plans coming up uh, we originally weren't going to go this weekend uh but things ended up lining up well uh that we were able to go to my family function so because of that uh the top 10 video is not going to happen i was going to do the top 10 video over the weekend well obviously i'm not here this weekend so it's not going to happen uh the top 10 video uh, i was leaning towards doing you know the, my, my top 10 favorite characters in smash bros it's uh smash bros ultimate it's actually good to wait because 
I don't know that I have my 10 favorite characters in the game yet. I haven't unlocked them all yet. So uh, that gives me more time for that. And plus, uh, I was probably going to end up switching to a different topic anyways because I'm, I'm not, I haven't done enough research yet to do that one. That being said, uh, I just want to experiment with the top fives or the top tens uh, just to see if there's something I actually want to make a weekly thing in 2019. I know I talked about wanting to do it, uh, but I want to make the content, see how much I enjoy making it, and see how much you guys enjoy watching it, what the viewership is like, uh, feedback for it, see if it's something I want to continue. Uh, and yes, the big video I'm still trying to get done for this month is the Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee review. Uh, I was told by uh, my buddy Advanced Media Network that he was sending me the capture card uh, yesterday. Um, which would have been Thursday. Uh, so if he uh, did send it, like he said he did through UPS, it should be here Saturday or Monday. I don't think they deliver on Sundays. Uh, and that'll be that'll be nice to have because that's the last piece of the puzzle I need to really power through uh, Let's Go Beach, Let's Go Eevee, and, and get all the footage I need and all that stuff and get ready to actually review the game. Uh, whether or not you guys care about my review of Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, I don't know, but I care to make it. I'm not reviewing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, so don't even bother asking. Um, not just because of the sheer amount of content, uh, just because I don't really do game reviews very often. Uh, and Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee is kind of a experiment to see how well you guys like my review style how well you guys enjoy me reviewing games uh, and to see if you guys want to support me doing that on patreon because re game reviews take a lot of time out of my schedule uh this is my job and to take a lot of time out of my schedule you know hundreds of hours for a single review that i make five bucks on um not good so uh we have a patreon goal of hitting 300 dollars per month we're at 100 and 82 i think right now if we hit 300 then i will do at least one major game review per month uh, that our patrons can decide on which with the, all the big games coming out next year there'll be a lot of big games our patrons will probably want me to check out and review for them so uh and for all of you so this is kind of an advertisement for that tier we have on patreon as well as an advertisement in general that hey do you guys want me to do more reviews I don't know. Uh, I've never been a channel that's done a lot of them. last one I did was Mario Tennis Aces. The last one before that was Tiny Metal. And then before that was Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And then before that was Breath of the Wild. So I have not done a ton of game reviews uh, on this channel anyways. Um, big thing this past week is we didn't have a podcast episode. Instead, we had the podcast Punishment. Uh, the podcast Punishment was, was fun. Eric running around the block in, in shorts in the middle of winter, making a snow angel at the end, no shirt on. It was... It was, it was good times. That video's up. It's got like 600 plus views. I hope you, if you haven't checked it out, you know, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> it's a, you see Eric, uh, you know, it's, it was good for Eric cause he actually got to, got a little workout in. So good for him. Um, another big thing though about the podcast is I want to change how the podcast is done in two specific ways. Uh, first off the upcoming episode of the podcast, it's already been recorded. Uh, and it was done with this set. This table, this computer, this microphone, uh, the other microphone, which is actually literally just sitting on the floor here, so it's off camera. Uh, the extra chair, just off camera. Um, it, it was done in this set, you know, more zoomed out with me over here, Eric over here. And uh, that's because, one, I wanted to make editing easier on me since I wasn't going to be here this weekend to edit. In fact, the as I'm recording this, the podcast is actually currently rendering. Um, so... Hopefully it finishes rendering at some point today so I can render out this for tomorrow uh, because I don't plan to do any work tomorrow or Sunday uh, beyond coming home like Sunday night and then maybe getting the podcast set to go in the morning and stuff like that. Uh, but I think uh, what I liked about using this practical background is our podcast is typically used a green screen. I have an entire room literally painted green that's dedicated to green screen work. But I don't use it that often. The only time I was using that room was for the podcast. And in editing the podcast last week for my first time in months, uh, I didn't really enjoy editing it. The green screen was not keen very well. And I think for um, rare instances, I really want to still use a green screen. Uh, but I don't know that uh, those rare instances are worth taking an entire like space of my studio up. Does that make sense? Like, literally, I have an entire... My studio is two rooms, okay? We got this big space, which has... Here's all my editing stuff. Uh, here is... Like, like that's my computer, my desk, my little kitchenette area. 
Uh, and then I have my whiteboards a little bit on this wall next to the door that goes to the other room. I've got this wall over here, you know, that's like over on this side of the room. That is where I do prime news. It's just a blank white wall that I sh shine a floodlight, a LED floodlight pad, and then uh, that's the background. It's just a practical, solid color background. I really, really like it. I might experiment with different lights in the future that have like patterns and stuff like that. Uh, and we'll we'll play around with that the more we get into it. I'm actually debating on getting a second flood lamp. So what I could do is shine one flood lamp from the top up to, and then one flood lamp from the ceiling down. Uh, and I think that might create uh, some cool little tones on the background. Uh, and But, but that's, uh, that's something for me to explore another day. Uh, I have this set right here. Obviously, this is like my gamer set. Uh, and then I have... Uh, over here, where it's just where the couch and the TV, it's kind of like my man cave corner of the office because it's got a lot of sports stuff. But also, uh, I'm going to have like some footage from over there for the Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee review. It's kind of like where my, my, my gaming setup for videos, uh, and I don't, I don't really use it for much, but... Uh, I haven't. I think I've used it in one video so far. To be used in another, but still, that's like my three sets plus my editing and kitchenette area. So I think uh, the other set was in there with the podcast, and I think what I want to do is take at least half of that room and repaint it. So leave the one, leave like one of the walls in it green. Uh, for when I do want to use some dedicated green screen work. Now I do have a portable green screen that's just sitting over here uh, that uh, I do need to get folded up, but. Um, that I might start using in live streams a little bit more if I can make it work. Uh, I'm trying to maybe get it so I do, um, uh, once I get the new capture card in, then maybe I do Q&A live streams from this setup, and then I put the green screen behind me. I don't, there's some, there's some stuff I'm experimenting with for live streams, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at, uh, when it comes to podcast is I, I kind of want to rebuild the set for the podcast and do a practical effect background instead of a green screen is kind of what I'm getting at. I want to put some monitors up. Um, I don't know if the monitors I have are actually going to look good on the camera. So that's something I got to experiment. Not like my 4K ones, but I have some extra monitors just sitting in there that maybe I could run to, to this bad boy here um, in the podcast and like change the backgrounds on them and have it be like you know, this is the MPP, you know, logo, whoops, the MPP logo, and, like, here's, like, the Nintendo Prime logo for one, or, like, if I have a show named, like, Nintendo Prime Plays, I could put, like, a Nintendo Prime Plays logo up or something. Um, I could change up that kind of stuff uh, more easily by having a couple monitors up on the wall that lets me do that, and then also having, like, some shelves that maybe have, like, a plant from Ikea, you know, one of those fake plants, and then maybe some, uh, some boxes of some gamer stuff. Uh, maybe I decide to take like my physical Switch games and like do a physical Switch game shelf, something like that. I've talked about also uh, potentially having like a shelf of controllers for Switch or like controllers from NES, SNES, N64, etc. Like going on up, you know, up the scale. Then maybe have like the different Game Boys or whatever. I don't know. There's some some things I want to do. I want to make it very different because this set here, as amazing as it is, is jam packed with Zelda. Uh, I have more Zelda memorabilia, more Zelda amiibo, more Zelda period than ever because I was doing Zelda stuff for 12 years of my life. Uh, as you know, a huge chunk of that, about half of that as a job. And because of that, I was getting a whole bunch of Zelda stuff related to my job uh, from the amiibos to the Yahtzee game, which is actually a gift from, some, uh, from a parent when I used to be um, an after school teacher. Uh, I got the Majora's Mask that a fan sent to me. I said the Majora's Mask 3DS XL box. I don't have the system anymore, but I still kept the box. Um, I got a bunch of guides, and I have some um, bigger statues and stuff. And you'll notice, like, there's other things in my setup. Like, I have Nintendo Labo. Um, I don't know if that, that's showing up on camera right now. But, yeah, I have other stuff in here. But one thing I do think I need to do is change up. Um, like, I noticed that my two Zelda shelves are kind of, like, at the same height. And that height is a primary height for the camera. <laughs> So I think I need to like take this Zelda shelf and put it like down one and then or maybe even down two and then put another Nintendo shelf. I don't know. There's things I want to do with this set, but for the podcast set, I'm thinking of a, a more simplistic looking set that uh, that fits and and really just fits that style. I also might do unboxings in there and then save this set for prime answers and then discussion videos and then use that set for unboxings, product reviews and uh and the podcast but uh and then obviously the prime news here i'll still have the green screen for one if i want to do any recordings where i'm standing up using the green screen i'll still have that um and then obviously i have my occasional gaming sets uh, where i watch sports and, and stuff like that um so yeah i don't know that's what i'm thinking right now because then that room turns into two sets instead of one uh and i have to get like a new desk in there as well 
so there's a lot of things I'm thinking about, but I basically have decided that I'd want to use practical backgrounds for the podcast. I don't want to use green screen anymore. It's not keen very well for me. Uh, and for now, the podcast the rest of this year is probably going to use this background just to simplify things for me. But uh, that's because that room is going to be under construction, and i got to figure out my budget. Um, right now, the budget's $0. I don't have any money to invest in it. But uh, I'm going to see if even just with the green background, which, I mean, a green screen background just being green isn't the worst thing. But is there anything I could do to make it look okay now? I think, like, making it a Zelda background would be great because that fits with green. But um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I turn it to the Luigi background. I don't know. Something I could do with it now that's cheap and simple. Uh, maybe get some wall clings. Uh, there are those wall clings out there, those Mario, those Zelda, those Kirby, Smash Bros. wall clings. That, that's an idea I had as well. You can like make like a little Smash Bros. battle going on or something. I don't know. There's some stuff I'm in debating on, so just, just throwing you where my head is at. I also want to mention uh, that we are, at least I am planning to refresh the Patreon tiers. It has been a while since I have kind of dabbled in the patreon tiers uh and i just want to let let people know if you're a current patron if you're considering on becoming a patreon a patron at patreon.com slash nintendo prime i want to refresh the tiers a bit uh and change them up for 2019 uh right now the po- uh, the podcast the the tiers are really focused on the podcast right five dollars a month you get you know you get the podcast early ten dollars a month you get to watch the podcast early uh, you get to watch the podcast uh, as we record it. $20 a month, you get to be on a podcast. I feel like in order to entice more of you guys to want to support us through Patreon and continue um, our fan funding for different shows, I need to uh, actually add shows to the not only the overall goals, not just like, okay, $300 is uh, the you know goal for reviews. Uh, $400 is the goal to maybe do weekly top 10s instead of monthly top 10s or whatever. Uh, that's great, having like those long-term goals, but also making each individual tier um, have more to it. Uh, I think, obviously, the $5 tier, which is our most popular tier, which is to get the podcast early, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, I think, though, I can expand some of these tiers. Like, for $5, you get the podcast early and you get something else. For $10, you can watch the podcast live and you get something else, right? Make it so the tiers are not just podcast related and maybe even add in an additional $50 tier uh, for something that uh, could be really, really special that I'm debating on um, behind the scenes. Uh, so again, just want to keep you informed on that. Stay tuned. I am willing to take ideas. If you guys have ideas for Patreon tiers uh, down in the comments below that you think would work, please try to keep the ideas related to the channel, related to Nintendo in some sort of way, related in some content I can make. Uh, I know Edward Norton threw out an idea this past week about um, doing game streams uh, with patrons uh, or, or doing streams where I play with patrons, but I play games that aren't necessarily Nintendo, say a uh, game of Age of Empires 2 on PC or something. And I think that's great. I think it's an amazing thing. And I think, you know, if I did that, that's something like if I made a tier for that, um, Edward Norton himself might up himself to that tier because clearly it's something he wants to do. But I can't just make a tier that one person's interested in, and especially when that tier is uh, not related to the rest of what we do. Uh, and I, I got to I got to be conscientious of that. Uh, so again, I'm I'm thinking about reworking it and, and trying to make it so it's not just podcast focused. By the way, thank you so much for all our patrons who have supported this and made this podcast that we do do every week uh, happen virtually every single week. Um, because without that support, it, it would it wouldn't be happening because the podcast is very time consuming, very time consuming on my editing, and you know it's not like it gets the most views in the world. Uh, but I really enjoy the podcast. It's one of my favorite pieces of content we make. And it, w- it would exist with or without your support. It just would not be weekly without your support. And uh, game reviews, as an example, They're, they've still happened once in a blue moon on the channel. Like, it's happening for Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Uh, but if you want it to happen more than once in a blue moon, we need your support on Patreon. Uh, and i, I got to come up with some better tiers. If you guys have ideas, let me know down in the comments. All right, let's get right into the questions this week. Now, the first questions we have come from Twitter. We have two of them. Uh, One is from at SonicMan4321. He says, I've never been able to master dodging in Smash Bros. How do you do with it? I suck. One thing I did notice, and this is probably something that I maybe it's always existed. um, When I'm jumping and I hit the bumper, uh, the right or left bumper, uh, I will do an air dodge right or left in the air. Uh, I thought that was really cool. I don't know if that's been in every Smash Bros. game, but I've just never noticed. Uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing with Smash Bros. 
I have never once hit the menu to look at the controls. So, like, how I learned how to play Smash Bros. on N64 is largely how I still play it today, which means I don't know crap about doing wave dashing or dashing at all, although now the air dash that I randomly discovered. I only recently figured out how to do, like, the mini Final Smash, let alone using the full Final Smash, which I still haven't figured out all these years. Uh, I, I'm not a great person to talk to about advice when it comes to dodging in Super Smash Bros. I just know how to do that little air dodge. Um, there's basically... What I would say is open up the control menu and look at the controls. It gives you not just like the up B, the down B, the side B, the A attacks, all that stuff. Like if you actually go down, it'll give you some of those intricacies about um, about dodging and stuff. Now it's not going to give you every little thing, but it'll give you all the controls you need to know to do it. And then you just got to control, you know, get better with flicks, get better with button combos, uh, stuff like that. So. I am definitely not someone to ask about it. I suck at Smash Bros. I am the worst Super Smash Bros. player in the world. But, I mean, I obviously love the Smash. I'm wearing this shirt two weeks in a row for the show because I love the Smash. So, um, I'm not great at it. Don't care to necessarily. It's weird that I don't care to want to get great at it, though. I think if I, if I was playing more of you guys on stream. See, right now I'm just playing a lot of single player. Once I'm done with the single player and I'm playing you guys on stream a lot, that's when I'll probably start caring about maybe upping my skills because, I mean, I still want to be the best. Like, no, I never was. Pokemon. All right. Next question comes from uh, Corey underscore Bohm. He says, let's try again. It's a question he asked last week, but I didn't answer it the way he wanted to because he worded it weird. He says, uh, which character would you permanently eliminate from every Smash game, including future entries? helps when i word it correctly and he said obviously this is where you don't have a choice you have to remove someone i always hate these you don't have a choice questions because i wouldn't remove i wouldn't say i wouldn't remove anyone but um probably one of the fire emblem copycats but i mean that doesn't cover every like my, my cop out answer is to basically say uh remove one of the original like eight or twelve um, so then that just covers all the games since those OG characters are in every single game. Um, man, like I didn't do any research for this question. So from the original roster, I never cared. Here's the thing. I've never cared for playing with Mario. Blasphemy to remove Mario from Super Smash Bros. But I've just personally never cared to play with Mario. So honestly, I would remove Mario from all of them if it was up to me, but like you can't do that. It's more. It's the Nintendo. You can't remove Mario. So from, uh, oh man, I mean, would I remove Bowser from the OG roster just because I don't care about him? Uh, from Melee, would I also end up removing Bowser because I, I don't really care for him? Uh, from Brawl's roster, I'd pro like one of the Fire Emblem characters. It just take your pick. I'll remove one of the Fire Emblem characters from the Brawl roster. Same on Wii U because I just think there's too many of them. Uh, and then on, on Smash Bros. Uh, Ultimate, I mean, I don't really care about Simon or Richter. So one of those two, I guess. One of the Echo Fighters. Any of the Echo Fighters, really. I, I know. I mean, here's the thing. Like, it's a very difficult question to answer because no matter what I say, no one's going to be happy. Um and I'm someone who wants the roster shrunk down, but I don't really know how to do that. I'm glad that I don't have to face, that I don't have to be the one that makes those decisions, I guess. Uh, all right, these next batch of questions come from YouTube. Uh, actually, hold on. We have one question I forgot to add uh, from our patrons. Uh, this goes from Be Righteous. Thank you so much for the question. He says, how many characters have you unlocked for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate so far, and which was your toughest fight? Uh, I've only unlocked, like, three? <sighs> yeah. I, I'm not even sure. I, have, I unlocked Villager. I unlocked King K. Rule. I don't even remember who the other one is. Anyways, I, I've unlocked those two. And since I only really remember those two, probably the hardest was Villager. King K. Rule wasn't too bad. But Villager Villager was, was, was between the two that I remember was, was pretty difficult. I, I died. Actually, you know what? Here's the thing. The hardest one to unlock so far for me has been Ice Climbers. I lost to them. That's why they're not unlocked. But um, of the ones I've unlocked, it was it was definitely uh, Villager. I did beat him in one go, but uh, I barely beat him. So uh, that's where I have to go. I know, Blasphemy, I, I'm, Smash has been out like a week, and I just still don't have more unlocked. But don't have time. 
I know it's it's holiday season. That's what sucks about major games coming out this time of year. I don't have time to play them this time of year. This is the worst time of year for games to release for me. But I do my best. Uh, let's see. Now we get to the questions from YouTube. This first one comes from Awesome Modder. He says, so you wouldn't stop posting videos about it. He's, he's referencing uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, now you're telling, uh, reading comments and replying a video telling us to stop what we never wanted you to do. And I was really confused with this question because my, my title of my prime answers last week was very tongue-in-cheek. It was, stop asking me questions about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, it was very much, a, I expected a lot of questions about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm not the best person to ask questions of that game for, but you can ask them if you want. And I had a lot of Smash Bros. questions, and I kind of tongue-in-cheek was like, ah, oh, yeah, don't ask me those questions anymore. Don't really care if you do, to be honest. Uh, and this guy got kind of mad. And I think he got kind of mad because I had one negative video on Smash, like, posted that last week. Like, not this week, but last week. Um, and that, and that negative video really wasn't even that negative. <laughs> like most of my coverage of Smash has been overly positive, like Piranha Pent DLC and the online lag. Like that's the only things I've had. Like that's literally all I've, all I've complained about with Smash. Everything else has been awesome. Well, until you watch our upcoming podcast, I will admit there's some criticism of Smash Bros coming up in that podcast. Um, not that I, I think the game is bad or anything or even not great. The game is wonderful. I even, I even put that in the title. I'm like, Smash Bros. is wonderful, but well, anyways. Um, so I'm, I'm tongue-in-cheek. And, and for those who don't know what that means, it, it's kind of like a hint, hint, it's okay to keep asking them. It's just kind of like a joke. Does that make sense? Um, that's the simplest layman way I can I can explain it. So, yeah, you can keep asking me Smash Bros. questions. It's okay. You, I'm not going to have as much to say about it because I haven't played enough of it. But um, So, yeah, I... I think some people just uh, is it, is it part of the gamer outrage culture? Like you see one negative video and something you disagree with, and then you just get angry and you hate me forever. I don't know. I mean, I don't even think it's gamer. I think it's just people outrage. I, I think it's just outrage cult, outrage cultures in general. Like people were always looking for something to be mad about. Um, fun fact: that this Michael kid. I assume he's a kid. I guess I don't know his age. Uh, he comes onto my channel and he make like every time I have any sort of minor like minor criticism of nintendo he comes on and he like you know, makes fun of how fat i am and then he talks about uh, how i should give my switch to my kids or my my fiance who wouldn't complain about it who would appreciate it and that i don't love nintendo and i'm a fake fan and all this stuff um but he only shows up on those videos right so for the past three weeks i've had a lot of positive nintendo videos a lot of them. I, I've, I've made something like 60 videos or something over the last three weeks. Almost 60 videos, and there's been like two negative videos out of the 60. But he's on those negative videos telling me how stupid I am. But notice how he doesn't come into my positive videos and say anything. I mean, if you're not going to take the good with the bad, and you're only going to take the bad, you're not really getting a full picture of my fandom and how much I passionately care about Nintendo. Um, kind of as a company, but more as um, a form of entertainment for me. All right, uh, next up we have Edward Norton. He says, can you stream what does the option menu in Smash do? Uh, or does, what does it do? I don't know. You, you worded it a little strange. I, I, I think you were joking, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't really looked at the options menu. Maybe I should. Maybe it's kind of funny because when you go to options, there's no options. I should probably check it out. That would be funny. That would be funny if there's like nothing you could really do in there. Uh, Retro Treats asks, uh, what's your favorite thing about Smash, uh, and what do you hate? Uh, I assume you're talking about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, my favorite thing about it so far has been Classic Mode. I love Classic Mode. Uh, I've only done it, gone through it one time with Link, and I did that on live stream. Uh, but I love, I love, I've always loved the Classic Mode. Uh, you know, battling up a ring of enemies, uh, building up to this final boss fight. I love that. I love that they each have their own boss at the end, or at least I assume they do. Link had his own boss at the end. Uh, but yeah, that's, that, that's probably my favorite thing. I, I really like that classic mode. It, it, it's awesome. Uh, what do I hate? I don't know if there's anything I hate. I mean, I've had some online matches that I've been good. I've had some online matches that have been laggy. Uh, I think maybe the thing I hate is that I'm really bad at the game. Uh, and I'm not sure that I'm willing to put in the time and the effort to get better at it. So that's more of a frustration on my part and the game's part. Uh, I also think World of Light, um, I don't hate it, but I, I don't know that there is a casual friendly story mode. World of Light is not casual friendly. 
Uh, and as a casual Smash Bros. fan, Subspace Emissary was casual friendly. Uh, and I feel like they built World of Light to be a, a story mode for hardcore Smash fans, which is great. But for casuals, we need, we, sh- we need something besides classic mode. And uh, I wish he would have like thought about that or put in like a super easy mode or put in um, a separate story mode uh, that maybe is easier. And then if you want a bigger challenge, you go to World of Light. Uh, you know, maybe have like a World of Dark that's easier than a World of Light that's the, 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 you know, the hardcore mode. But I don't know. That's just me. I don't really, thing is, I don't really hate anything about the game. Uh, besides when I get lag online. So, uh, Sonic Forces 2017 uh, asks, How is Crash Team Racing a team racing game? Is it anything like Team Sonic Racing? I can't speak for Team Sonic Racing besides the fact that I played it. I know you, you're on, I think you're on a team of three in Team Sonic Racing. I played it at E3. I, I think I remember having a team of three. I was Sonic and then I had Tails and uh, Tail and Knuckles. I think we're on my team. Anyways, uh, I haven't played Crash Team Racing either, but here's how how I can explain it from... um, It doesn't work like Team Sonic Racing. From what I can tell, it's more like a Mario Kart. But here's what I can explain, because it has a story mode, right? That's the big difference it has over Mario Kart, is there's actually a story mode. And the story goes like this. I got this off Wikipedia. And it says, The game's story focuses on the efforts of a ragtag team of characters in the Crash Bandicoot series who must race against the Eagle... Man- Mania- Manical? Oh my god, I can't even say the word. Nitrous Oxide to save their planet from destruction. In the game, players can take control of one of 15 Crash Bandicoot series characters. Only eight are available at first. During the races, offensive and speed boosting power ups can be used to gain an advantage. So, what it sounds like is the, uh, the Crash Bandicoot characters are all teaming up to stop this Ego Manical Nitrous Oxide like enemy. Uh, so. Uh, that's where I think the team aspect comes in. It's not that you're team racing. It's that you are in, in the story mode of the game trying to stop. You're, you're teaming up with these guys in races to try to stop the bad guy. So that's, I think, where it comes into play. It's not your traditional team play format. Like, not even in Mario Kart where, like, you can split off in red and blue teams or whatever. It's not even like that. Uh, so at least so far, maybe there is a way, like, a team race. I shouldn't say there isn't that, that option. But I don't think that's where it gets the team from. It gets the team from the story mode. So Crash Team Racing is about the Crash Team, the team of characters from Crash fighting evil in the game. That's that, that's the premise. That's at least what I understand. Those of you that have way more experience actually playing Crash Team Racing can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, Ahmed A. says, why aren't you a teacher anymore? Uh, to be fair, I was never technically... Uh, my position was an, called an after-school teacher. So what that meant was... Um, I worked for the YMCA, and after school was done, we had after-school care programs uh, at all of the various elementary schools, uh, and I was working at the one that's closest to me. My daughter was going to that school for one year. She's in private schools now. It's a public school, uh, and I worked there for four years, and what we would do is, you know, once school gets out, there'd be a group of kids that are in the program that would come to the gym, um, and, you know, we'd sign them in and go over things. We'd have a snack and stuff. Uh, we'd do a circle time and, and share things about each other, about our lives, about what's happening that day. Um, and then we'd go over, like, a planned schedule. That we, we, we'd have homework time. Uh, that's where I did uh, more of the parent-slash-teacher role where you're teaching the kids or helping them out. Um, we would do science projects. We would do art projects. Uh, we would do uh, – sometimes we would do math games to try to make math a little more fun, uh, stuff like that. And a lot of it really wasn't that there was lesson plans. I mean, yes, we, we would actually plan out the weeks and months in advance the things we were going to do. Uh, but essentially what it is is a souped-up daycare program, okay? So you have, like, your normal daycare where you're just watching the kids and, yeah, maybe you have your activities and this is playtime inside, this is playtime outside, and we had that too. But uh, we would also throw educational elements into it um, to help um, further their education at the school, help these kids out that are struggling with math that have a hard time talking to their parents about it, help these kids out uh, getting their homework done so their parents don't have to deal with it. Uh, So it's a daycare program, but it's a daycare program that cares about um, the education of your kid. Uh, So it's... uh, I, I was never certified to be a teacher. I never went to school to become a teacher. Uh, it's a great program to be in if you are going to school to become a teacher because it counts as teaching experience. Uh, it's also a great program to go in if you're going to get into child care. Uh, if you're going to go, you know, want, you want to be a child care specialist or something. Um, I'll, I, I only had to do very minimal training. There was an online course. I had to get my fingerprints and be put in a database because anytime you're going to be watching children, you have to be put in a federal database, which I think is actually for the best um, because, you know, you don't want people watching your kids who have records that um, indicate they should not be in charge of children. 
So I think uh, in general, uh, I'm pretty happy with the end result of, uh, of that job. Um, I worked there for four years. I wasn't paid very well. I mean, teachers in general uh, at elementary schools are not paid well. So what do you think an after-school teacher gets paid? Even less. Uh, it was part-time over 20 hours a week, uh, five days a week, 20 hours a week. And uh, it, was, it, it wasn't a bad job. I don't have any regrets. You know, it's four hours a day, Monday through Friday. Uh, I, I just, you hit the four-year mark, and we were coming to the end of the four-year, and um, there was a situation that occurred that I don't, I don't really want to get into. Um, it wasn't a situation with any of the kids at the school, by the way, so none of them were in danger. Nothing bad happened there. Um, but it was, a, it was more of a personal life situation that happened that led to me just not being able to work there anymore. Now, there were two things about it. One, I really liked the job because um, the most hectic time with, our, with my children is when they get off the bus, which they're coming to get off the bus here soon. Um, but the most hectic time with my kids is when they get off the bus. They're, they're tired, but they have energy because they were just with their friends, and they're hungry, and they're this and that. And it's just like you have homework to do, and it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. You figure I'd be used to it from the elementary school program, but I'm not because the elementary school program is different. When you have kids coming from school – staying in the school to your program it's just like they're it's just like them changing classes it's like them going from one classroom to another classroom so they're already in the school mode right so it's, it's easier to keep them um in line and behaving uh because of that but when my kids get home off the bus they're out of school mode. they want nothing to do with school anymore so it's just uh it, it's a lot harder to deal with that so what was nice is because i did the after school program my fiance got to deal with all that the downside was I was really only seeing my kids in the morning because I would work at this job or another job during the day, and then I'd have to do that job after school, and I basically wouldn't see my kids except for like before bed and then when they went on the bus outside of weekends. So I didn't like that. I don't know. It's just the reality for a lot of adults. You know, you're working, you're working full time adult. You know, you don't get to see your kids as often. But uh, I, I didn't like that. And in combination with other things that were happening, uh, I just decided I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, and here I am. Uh, doing this and I was doing this then too um, but uh, doing it even more now and uh, I miss the job there's asked I miss the kids the most uh, there's still some kids at that elementary school that remember me um, I, I miss I miss that part of the job I miss making them smile I miss help uh, you know the, the trust the parents had in me uh, for how well behaved their kids were when they went home um, I, I, I miss aspects of it because it, in a lot of ways it's easier than parenting uh, but, uh, there's things I don't miss about it too. There are some, some particularly tough children, uh, particularly tough aspects of the job, uh, that could really grind on you when, you know, it's all great for the first few months and then you come back after Christmas break and all hell breaks loose. And eh, I, I enjoyed it. It's one of those things where if I wanted to, I could see myself becoming a teacher someday. I just don't want to. It's not really... It's something I would be good at, but it's not something that um, I really have any love of doing. It's more so, eh, I'm good at it. But I'm good at a lot of things. So being good at something is not the same as loving it. I'm, I'm halfway decent here at YouTube, but I actually enjoy doing this. I love, do I love these conversations, these videos. So that's why I'm doing it. Um, yeah, obviously money because I'm getting paid. I wouldn't be able to do this as often if I, you know. But I would still be making videos even if I wasn't getting a paycheck. They just would be a lot less frequent, you know, like two or three times a week. Uh, but, uh, I'm able to be fortunate enough to do this every day. And this is what I love to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I want my career to be. I want my career to be a content creator here on YouTube, talking about Nintendo, reporting on news, doing all that stuff for you guys. Uh, and for me, cause I enjoy it and to be an inspiration maybe for my children to chase their own dreams as well. Uh, next up is come from Omega fire. He says, I got a question for you, Nate. Am I going to play, uh, Onimusha? Sorry if I butchered that on switch. Never played it before. I've heard of it, never seen gameplay, don't really have a lot of interest, but uh, maybe. That's all I can say. It's a, it's a series I don't know that much about. So it's hard to talk about a series I don't know very well. Uh, and then, yeah, Omega Fighter then says, do you think Onimusha will make it to Smash Bros? Uh, since Smash Bros. DLC will be third party? Yeah, bring that Samurai to Smash Bros. We don't know that Smash Bros. all DLC is going to be third party, by the way. Uh, Reggie just referenced, you know, unexpected. Unexpected doesn't necessarily mean it's going to all be third party. Uh, and with on Oni Mushu, I think is coming to Switch. That would be more expected than Persona was. So we'll see. Uh, the Mind of Thomas asks, "What surprises do you think Nintendo has in store, if any, for 2019?" What surprises? 
Ah, oh, man. I think they're going to announce a new Zelda game of some type, whether it's a HD remaster uh, or whether it's a top-down Zelda game. Heck, maybe they'll surprise us and show off the next Breath of the Wild kind of game. Uh, I think that's going to happen. I think we're going to get a tease of, of some sort of Mario game, uh, whether it's Mario Kart, whether it is you know Mario Kart 9, or whether it's a new 3D Mario or a new side-scrolling Mario or Mario Maker. I don't know. Some sort of Mario something. Uh, I think uh, we're going to see the revival of the last story. Uh, either our last story HD remaster or an announcement for the last story 2. Something like that. Nintendo's going to surprise us with some things. The thing is, we already know a lot, but there's going to be even more uh, being unveiled that we don't know yet. Uh, Daniel Barrow says, Since cartridges are the only obstacle for many third-party developers' games coming to the Switch. It's not. I mean, it's one. It, it's a big obstacle, but it's not the, it's not the only. Uh, what AAA studio do you think will be the first to release... They're over 80 gigabyte game as downloadable only on the Switch eShop. What AAA game would you have wished was already on the Switch to the Switch? I'm confused. I think, okay. Or I think you said, I think you meant, I think you meant what AAA game do you wish have already made the Switch to the Switch? I think is what you meant to say. And it says, don't talk about this not happening, so don't be honest. <laughs> it's more a question of when, in your opinion. Uh, and it's, Probably at least two years from now. But who is first? For starters, this has already happened. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations 2. When you bought the physical copy, like, like Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2, the second one was download only. It's already happened. So that's for starters. It's already happened. It just hasn't happened to a major new... Like, it hasn't happened to Doom or Wolfenstein or Doom Eternal or NBA, right? Like, none of those have done it. They've just been like, some of it's on cart, the rest is downloaded. Uh, I don't think that there's any AAA third-party developer that's even considering digital only on Switch outside of things like um, like what Assassin's Creed Odyssey is doing or Resident Evil 7 with the game streaming. Obviously, I think there's games that are going to be game streaming only on Switch, but I don't think there's anything that's going to be only on the eShop from a AAA perspective and not on a cartridge, even if it's only an 8-gigabyte cartridge with a 50-gigabyte download. It's still going to be there in a physical format. Uh, and the big reason for that is, one, uh, you're pissing on a shitload of consumers by not having it available physically. And two, people like to have that resale value on their games. So bare minimum, they're always going to use the 8 gig and then just have you download the rest. Uh, so I don't think it's actually going to happen on Switch. I think you're way off base by assuming it's going to happen on a larger scale than you know these ports that happen to have like the second game as a download only. Uh, and even then, you can still buy physically. You just can't resell you know, the second Revelations game because it was only you know, a digital code. Uh, that being said, um, do you think, you know, we'll be the first ones to over 80? The thing is, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of over 80 gigabyte games on Switch because by the time you shrink down the game, lower the resolution, lower the textures, lower this, lower that, by the time you actually get one of those massive, like say Red Dead Redemption 2, you know, 100 gigabytes, by the time you can actually downscale that and get that to run on Switch, it's not going to be 80 gigs. It's going to be 40 to 50. So, you got to remember, Switch has other limitations that aren't cartridge-related. Uh, that has way more to do. Like, cartridges are not why third-party developers aren't on Switch. We need to be clear about that. Cartridges are why late ports to Switch are expensive. Cartridges have nothing to do with why third parties aren't here. That's not the primary reason. But, uh... You can go ahead and believe that's the case if you if you would like. It's definitely uh, a, a, an issue for sure, but it's not like no one like like Activision's not like oh Call of Duty's not going to be on Switch because we have to put it on an expensive cartridge. That's not even a thought that's crossing their mind. They don't want to put Call of Duty say Black Ops on Switch one because they didn't develop it while Switch was uh, you know they didn't start development while they had dev kits for Switch and two um, they'd have to downscale the game to a point that they're not probably happy with the way it looks. That's the primary issue. You see what Ark Survival Evolved looks like on Switch? That's what developers are scared of. So, more so than anything else. Uh, the Summoner says, Do you know the way uh, to being a master at Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Nice little nice little reference to that meme earlier this year. Uh, do, I, do I know the way to be a master at Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? I mean, talk to other pros. Watch some videos that... I've seen a lot of videos out there from like Zero and some other Smash Bros. pros giving tips. Basically... Learn the controls, the base controls for starters, for me, and then uh, play around with the characters and, and just learn from the people that are better than you. That's the, the only way I could think of getting better. 
Besides just playing it till you figure it out on your own, I guess. Uh, Blade Art Dojo says, What early 2019 games are you looking forward to? I'm personally looking forward to Fire Emblem, Three Houses, and Yoshi. You basically just said the games I was going to say, which is Fire Emblem, Three Houses, and Yoshi. Um, I mean, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is interesting just because of the Super Crown. But uh, I've already played and beaten that game and the Luigi U DLC. We'll see if I pick it up. I think my kids would really enjoy playing it, so I'll probably end up picking it up anyways. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, those are the ones I'm personally looking forward to are Fire Emblem and Yoshi. Yoshi looks like uh, what Kirby probably should have been if they were would have delayed Kirby an extra year. Uh, Joel Master 64 says, What are the chances of Geometry Wars 3 Dimensions Evolved arriving on Switch? Um, I don't know anything about that game, so I'm just going to say 50-50. I, I've never even heard of that game. I've never even heard of Geometry Wars. I mean, is it math-related, I assume? Uh, if it's an indie title, I mean, heck, it's probably 80% chance it's going to come to Switch eventually. Because there's a lot of money to be made for indies on Switch. Uh, Edward Norton says, do you have any video games that you can relax and mellow out to? So when I'm relaxing, uh, admittedly, lately, I've been just, like, uh, in my bed playing games on my phone. Um, just to give an example. I had a missed call there. Oh, no big deal. Uh, so to give an example... Um, you know, obviously you guys know about like Taft Sports Baseball and stuff, but I've been playing some really weird things. Um, I've been like relaxing on ABC Mouse for some reason, which is an app for my kids. I don't know why. Um, you know, Homescapes, just some, you know, Dragalia Lost from Nintendo, Angry Birds 2. I'm just kind of been relaxing with phone games lately. Uh, but if I'm going to like sit down for a more fuller experience on like Switch or on my TV, um, it's still like Breath of the Wild. It's still like my go-to you know, you just relax. Like, if you tired of losing to a Lionel like I am, you can, like, walk away and just listen to the music and the rain and just enjoy it. Um, enjoy the sounds of nature, which is really weird to say that about a Nintendo game. But, hey, Breath of the Wild is legit. You can enjoy the sounds of nature with a light music track. It's it's so cool. Um, so that's kind of my, my relax and mellow out to kind of game. Um, it says, uh, Edward Norton then asks, what's your, favorite, uh, what's your first Disney movie you have seen? It was Bambi. I saw Bambi when I was really, really little. I remember specifically because I, I did not like the, you know, I think it was Bambi's mother or father. One of the two, anyways, that died really early. Or maybe they both died really early. Um, I didn't. I remember being scared of that when I was a kid. Second movie I ever saw of Disney was Cinderella, and then I was hooked on Cinderella, and I watched that on repeat forever. Uh, let's see here. Brave Lady X uh, says, what's your favorite Zelda game? And then Edgy1 says, what's your favorite game of all time? Both have the same answer, Breath of the Wild. I've answered that before, but I figured I'd bring up your questions because you guys are probably new to the channel and didn't know that, so it's Breath of the Wild. Uh, Lucas uh, Bridal Waters, the last question, who's my favorite YouTuber? This is a tough question. I fielded a question similar to this before, and I feel like my answer is different every time. Uh, the YouTubers I've been watching the most lately are Easy Allies. So Easy Allies. They're the ones I've been watching the most lately, the ones I take inspiration from. They're about to move into their own studio. Uh, starting in January, so I'm pretty pretty happy for them, and I've been supporting them on Patreon for two years now, something like that, pretty much since they went to YouTube from game trailers, so uh, they're my favorite YouTubers right now, but uh, my favorite YouTuber, I guess, there, but there's a lot of other ones I watch and I enjoy, um, and maybe you don't consider them YouTubers because they have, you know, they were traditional media game trailers, I don't know, but I like them, so those are my favorite for right now. That whole team of easy allies. Anyways, folks, that's going to do it uh, for this week's Prime Answers. Remember to enter our Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Nintendo Switch Bundle giveaway down in the description through the Gleam.io link. Uh, it's absolutely free to enter. You just have to be subscribed to the channel. Like this video if you like it. Leave your questions for next week down in the comments below. And I'll just catch all of you guys in the next one.